Now I, uh, I'm really excited about this. We are continuing in our series, Experiencing Jesus, and today it is presence, Jesus as presence. And I'm excited that Johanna, our pastor of Celebrate Recovery, will be preaching today. And um, you've likely seen Johanna here with her husband, Nick, and her two daughters, Elizabeth and Kate. Uh, Johanna's been part of Lakeside for 20 years. She's been on staff with us for nine years, and she's currently the pastor of Celebrate Recovery. And I would describe Johanna as a heart person, and she would agree with me on that. She experiences life primarily through her heart, not her head. You could say she is an emotional processor. And in an information-saturated, you know, head-focused world, we need more heart processors. And I know you're out there. You just probably need to be affirmed in that. We need you. We need heart processors. And so I'm really grateful that Johanna will be sharing Jesus as presence with us this morning. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Can you guys hear me? Awesome. Well, thank you, Robin. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to be here with you all this morning and to be able to share um, about G- experiencing Jesus' presence. We are in this new series, um, if you haven't been around, um, calling, called Experiencing Jesus. And uh, two weeks ago, Robin talked about experiencing Jesus as friend, one who is equal to one's own self, or the idea of a second self, or a kindred spirit. That Jesus, the truth is, that Jesus is and wants to be our friend. And then last week, as Robin mentioned, we got to witness these incredible stories of rescue and new life in Jesus as Miranda and Larry and Taylor were baptized. And the waters fell from heaven, literally. (laughs) If you were here, it poured rain right at the moment after they were baptized. Robin was praying, and you could not hear her praying because it just poured down. It was a really cool experience. And then after that, Robin spoke about experiencing Jesus as Savior, God as our rescuer, Jesus who pursues us, and not just in the kingdom life to come, but right here, right now. And so today, we're going to continue in this series, and we're talking about experiencing Jesus' presence. Now, I did Google the word presence uh, just to see what the definition was. And it says, presence is the state or fact of existing, occurring, or being present in a place or a thing. And so I am present here today. My presence is here, the presence of Johanna. (laughs) And you too, you are here. You are present Uh, this morning. And whether you are online or you're here in the room, um, you might be half awake. You might not want to be here. You might be excited. Or maybe Lakeside feels like home to you. But wherever you're at and whatever brings you here this morning, you're here. You are present. And when we gather together, we bring our full selves. We bring our emotions and our thoughts and our bodies, our physical selves, and all the sensations that go along with that, whether positive or negative. In essence, we are all here this morning occurring and happening and existing together. And if this is your first time joining us, I do want to extend another welcome to you. Uh, We are just so glad that you decided to be here at Lakeside with us this morning. So as we talk about Jesus' presence, I can't help but ask this question. Do we believe that Jesus is also present here this morning? And if we do, which I believe probably most of us in this room would say, yes, we do believe that he is here, then where is he? 
It's not like I can say, hey, Jesus, can you come up here and stand on stage with me this morning? No, I can't do that because he's not here. He's at least not physically here in his body. So then what does it mean and what does it look like to experience Jesus' presence, to experience him existing and occurring and happening right now, right now, here in this place. So Robin introduced me as a heart person, (laughs) which I definitely am. Um, And what I mean by that is that I do understand life very deeply through my emotional experiences. And my faith has been no different. I have always, uh, even before I gave my life over to Christ and began walking with God, even before that, I experienced a deep emotional knowing that God was real. And I felt this inner draw toward him. Now, over the past couple of years, um, as we here at Lakeside have been rediscovering and relearning who God is through the scriptures, my faith has really been challenged. And it's been challenged in the best way. I've had to think through how I understand God in my head, not just how I've been told to understand him. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. And I'm so thankful for Mark and for Robin and for others who have paved the way forward because my faith uh, has grown deeper and it has grown stronger because of it. Another side of this journey um, of learning and unlearning, I've also personally really encountered a lot of deep emotional wrestling and struggling, feelings of uncertainty um, and confusion at times. And to be totally honest, for a good chunk of time, I just felt lost. I felt lost. I've been, I've been encountering and was encountering this whole new God, this God that was so much bigger than anything I understood or anything I anticipated, so much more amazing, so much more majestic. And in that process, I really struggled feeling unsure of how to relate to him. Could I still trust him? Last month, um, 11 of us from our Celebrate Recovery community, uh, we headed to sunny California uh, for an annual conference. It's a hard life, you know. (laughs) And uh, the first morning at that conference, uh, I was really intentional about getting up early, which is not normal for me. Uh, So getting up early, and I just really wanted to connect with God. And my motivation for that, you know, I'm heading into this three-day conference and I'm like, I got to like take everything I can get out of this. Um, But I was still really wrestling. This was last month, really wrestling emotionally um, with how to connect with this new God that, that I've been encountering. And so I got in my chair that was in this room and gosh, man, the, the, the host homes, Uh, that we stayed in. They were just beautiful, beautiful homes. Uh, My bedroom uh, shower was like bigger than my kitchen here at home. They were just beautiful. And so I found there's a chair in my room and I went and sat in this chair and um, I put my head down um, on my lap, you know, like this in the chair. I was looking down and I closed my eyes and I just started to cry out to God. And I was like, God, like, I just don't understand. (laughs) I just don't understand. Like, you literally saved my life 20 years ago and took me out of the mess of everything that I'd created. Can I still trust you? Can I still trust you? Are you still the same God that saved me? And then almost immediately, uh, I saw Jesus' face. And I'm like sitting down in my chair, and it was like, I saw Jesus and he was kneeling down on the ground, looking up into my face and he just had, (laughs) he just had the most tender look on his face. And it was so welcoming and it was so reassuring 
And I just, and, th- and what he said, what he said to me in that moment, he just said, it's me. It's me, Johanna. It's still me. In that moment, I experienced Jesus' presence. The most common Hebrew term for the word presence is panim, and it's translated face. Face. To experience Jesus' presence is to experience his face, God's face, the face of God. And as we say here at Lakeside, when we see Jesus, we see God. (laughs) That's right. And that moment with Jesus that morning It changed me. A month ago, it changed me. Seeing the face of Jesus, it's like it reopened my heart to experience the presence of God in a fresh, new way. So with this new understanding of God that I now had and this experience of Jesus, I honestly feel like my faith has been renewed after 20 years. It's like this whole new God. You see, Jesus desires so deeply to bring his presence into our presence. And whether that's through imagination, like it was for me, or it's some other means, because Jesus, we can experience Jesus' presence in so many amazing ways. Like this morning when we were singing songs. Nature, like the rain last week, or maybe sitting under the stars if you're a camping person, that's me, or through our emotions or our minds and thinking and learning or community and friendships or solitude and silence or dreams. There are so many ways that we can experience the presence of God in our lives. And the scriptures, they're filled with the presence of God. Really, the whole narrative of the Bible is God's enduring presence pursuing us. From the very beginning, the creation in uh, Genesis to the very end in Revelation, it's story after story and life after life of God's presence being made known and experienced through and in his people. I love Psalm 139, verse uh, 7 to 12. It says, I can never get away from your presence or your face. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me, your strength and your strength will support me. Barbara Brown Taylor, in her book, Freeing Jesus, she says this, Jesus' presence once embodied a human being 2,000 years ago is now a great mystery. As intimate as our inner awareness and as far flung as the stars. I just love that. And as we witnessed last week in these baptisms and we heard from Robin, Jesus' presence is here and now. It's as intimate as our own inner awareness. Just love that. I'm going to say it again. I just love that. He exists among us. Jesus is occurring and happening in this place this morning right now. Before Jesus' uh, crucifixion and resurrection, during those last moments that he would have had with his disciples, it's recorded in the book of John that Jesus promises to always be with us through the outpouring of his Spirit. And so we're going to read John 14, uh, verse 15 to 17. It says this, And I will ask the Father, Father meaning God, can be translated just God, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. And then it goes on in verse 25 and 26. 
I have said these things to you while I'm still with you, and that's Jesus, still with us. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father God will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Now, both of these passages refer to the Spirit as our Advocate, that God is going to give us another Advocate, the Spirit. When Jesus says another Advocate, he's actually referring to himself because Jesus is our advocate and the Holy Spirit is going to be sent as another advocate. Now, an advocate is a person who comes to our aid or pleads our case. They offer support and strength and comfort and counsel. The bottom line here is that the Holy Spirit is Jesus' successor. Jesus' successor that Jesus promises that he will leave us, the church, his spirit, to come to our aid, to support us and strengthen us and comfort us and counsel us. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are interchangeable. So just as when we see Jesus, we see God, when we see the Spirit, we see Jesus. Jesus is the Spirit. Or I might say is that when we experience the Spirit, we are experiencing Jesus. Barbara Brown Taylor also says, Christian theology has typically privileged knowledge about Jesus as the way to know the Spirit, but the Christian life works the opposite way. We cannot know Jesus without the Spirit. The Spirit is the personal presence of Jesus. Jesus here with us now. John 14, that passage we just read, the last line, verse 17, it says, you know him, meaning you know the Spirit, because he abides with you and he will be in you. You see, Jesus is telling us That this new comforter, this new strength, this advocate, this spirit of truth that will then lead us into all truth, that he is in us. That Jesus will dwell and reside within us. That is you and me, friends. (laughs) Like, isn't that incredible? Yes. (laughs) It's incredible. Aaron White Uh, He's a pastor who lives in the downtown east side of Vancouver, which is one of, I think it's actually the most, has the most highest drug overdose rates in Canada. He pastors and lives there. And he wrote in this book uh, that he wrote in his, it's his book, he's the author of it, uh, called Recovering. He says this, Jesus takes our humanity into heaven so that heaven can inhabit our humanity. Isn't that beautiful? Those songs sang about that this morning. He continues on to say, Aaron, the kingdom life of the world to come is now within us, as is Jesus himself. Not as a wonderful thought, not symbolically, not even by imitation, but truly, Truly, can you grasp that? Truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus is alive in you. (laughs) Jesus is here, now, in this place. Even though I can't physically call him up to join me, he is here. And our minds wrestle to wrap around this idea. I know mine does, but I wonder if that's because it's actually more than an idea. It's reality. It's reality that the presence, that the existence of the living God is dwelling in us, unfolding before our very eyes. Craig Keener, who is a scholar, he highlights how the book of John emphasizes this continuality between the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit is Jesus' successor, that the Holy Spirit is the leader of God's rescue mission. (laughs) 
Isn't that cool? God's rescue mission. And that it is the community of God empowered by the Spirit that is God's plan for humanity. The hope of the world. Friends, we have been called to embark on a rescue mission. To be Jesus to the world. To bring the hope to the world. Yes, you can clap. (laughs) Yes. Last week, (laughs) we read um, from St. Teresa of Avila, I think that's how you say it, uh, this quote, Christ has no body but ours, no hands, no feet on earth, but ours. I lost my spot. (laughs) Ours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Ours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Ours are the hands with which he blesses the world. Jesus may not be physically present in his body with us because he is now in our bodies. God in our bod. (laughs) We are the new face of Jesus to the world. The presence of Jesus here and now. I want us to grasp that. I need to. We're going to actually take a moment now. We've done this before. Take a moment to just sit. I want you to just sit in the presence of God. Because he's here in this place. And maybe something during our time together this morning has come to mind, or maybe to heart. Maybe through the music, through the songs and the words and the lyrics, and, or maybe an interaction you had as you came in today, someone you, who smiled at you, or just an interaction that you had, maybe that was even challenging, or words that I've shared, or maybe even your body, maybe your physical body is trying to tell you something, because we know that it does Tell us things. And so I just want to take a moment and I want to honor, I want us to just honor whatever, wherever you're at, um, what might be coming up for you. And you know, if there's nothing, then that's all good too. (laughs) There's, you just enjoy a moment. (laughs) Just enjoy a moment. I'm going to pray us into just having some quiet space. And then I'll invite Robin to come and share communion, lead us in communion. So Jesus, Jesus, you're here in this place with us. I believe that. Help me with my unbelief. God, I ask that you would just help us, that you would open us up to you in this moment, whatever it is that we're bringing if it feels like nothing or it feels like everything, can we just bring it to you and just sit with you in our chair? Maybe you're down on your knees looking up at our face. Just invite you here. God, we seek your face. We seek your face.
going to invite Robin now to come up, and she's going to lead us in communion together. Wow. <laughs> Jesus present. We believe Jesus is always present. It's just not just that we're not always present to Jesus. One of the places and spaces that Jesus has promised to be present in a very special way is at the communion table, the Lord's table. It's why we gather every month to eat and to drink together around a metaphorical table. If you can just imagine a table big enough for all of us, and not just all of us here in the room, but online. Imagine a table big enough for the world where there's a seat for everyone. And around this metaphorical table, we train ourselves in discerning the presence of Jesus, the nudge of Jesus, the voice of Jesus. And it's here at this table where we can recognize and receive forgiveness that flows right out of the broken body of Jesus and into our lives. The reconciliation that we deeply need as individuals, as people groups, as nations. The renewal of all things that comes to us through the cup of the covenant in his blood, Christ's presence always brings a reordering of our lives, if we let it. It's what makes this table so revolutionary. Here, as we do this, as we eat the little piece of bread and drink the little cup of juice, God shapes us into a people to be God's people, as Johanna said, to go out into the world, to be the presence of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's just pray before we continue. Oh God, we are so grateful that your presence is with us through the Holy Spirit, that we can know you through our spirit, that even our bodies respond to you. So I pray that you would teach us, those of us who are head-centered, to listen to our spirit, those who are heart-centered and emotion-centered, to experience you through their mind. So God, I just thank you for your presence with us, for this gift of this table for the work accomplished on the cross, forgiveness for the world. And as we continue in this, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. Amen. I can invite you to come up to one of the stations. The map will be on the slide. All of the bread is gluten-free. And I just invite you to take the juice and the cup and, uh, and the bread and just return to your seat, and we will all eat and drink together. <laughs> 